Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, D on the Couch. Today we will be talking about love. With me, I have Felicity and Lucia to help me answer some questions. So let's get to it. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, um, I'm an artist and I work with knitting and sounds. And I've mm -hmm. got three chickens and a cat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you. And um, Lucia? Hi, um, I'm a nurse, I'm a student nurse, so, and Dee is my really good friend, so, yeah. So we're here to talk about relationship, what's healthy and what's unhealthy. Uh, ah, yeah. nice to have you both here. Yeah. Thank you. Should Thanks be a very you. interesting um, discussion. And our first question is, what would you consider to be healthy indicators of a good relationship? Felicity? I think a healthy relationship is one where um, lots of the needs of both of the people in the relationship are being met. So there's no, like, so nobody's hungry and needing things that they're just not getting. Mm -hmm. That's my definition of a healthy relationship. Okay, that makes sense. What about you? Yeah, I think in a relationship people need to respect each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can be... If one partner is controlling, for example, that's not healthy. Like people need to be free in a relationship to be themselves. I mean, to discuss issue, like open up to each other. But mm -hmm. where where that is not happening, I don't think that is really healthy because you're not you're not yourself. So mm -hmm. people need to be themselves in a relationship, able freely talk about things, open up about things. So mm -hmm. that's what I would define healthy: being yourself. Okay, yeah. And for me, I think um, consideration is really key for me because once you have consideration for somebody, you can't really go wrong. You can't treat somebody unfairly if you consider their feelings, if you consider their needs. So for me, that's a really important um, element for a healthy relationship. The next question is, what would you consider to be indicators of an unhealthy relationship? We'll start with you, Lucia. Right. Um, I think for me, being controlling. You, for example, you're a man, you want to tell the woman, don't go anywhere, don't talk to this friend, don't talk to this friend. I mean, if a healthy relationship should be some, something, you should be free to be yourself. I mean, you should be your partner. Should know your your weirdest. I mean, you should be. You should have a laugh being in in, in a weird situation. Like, for example, laughing about farting. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you got no. me into that. <laughs> yeah, you should be. You should be completely yourself, not trying to hide some part of you. Yeah, no inhibitions. Yes, no inhibitions. Just yeah. being yourself. <laughs> so that's really really something that's important <laughs> that people are their self when yeah. they're with their significant order okay i can't believe you just you're talking about farting with my food in the background <laughs> <laughs> i can't deal with you <laughs> no i mean this is this is something important i mean yeah some people you want to fart and you're just holding it because <laughs> you don't know how that guy is going to feel i mean <laughs> <laughs> so would you would you do that on a first date would you let him know that, oh my God, I'm a woman and I fart? And, and when, people, when people have great connection, it doesn't matter what you do. The other person just goes along with you. Your craziness right. should be able to, like, you should be, re be really crazy around mm -hmm. somebody that really, you really connect with. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter. It doesn't stop that person from hating you or loving you or whatever. Just the connection should be there. That's for me, that's what's healthy. Absolutely, yeah. 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 And for me, I think um, support is very important. Especially if you've got, um, you've got dreams, you've got goals, you've got projects that you're trying to put in place. And if you have somebody that doesn't support you, or somebody who puts down your, um, your endeavours, yeah, for whatever reason, um, I think that's, like a, a deal breaker because if you if you love me then you would want to support me you'd want to see me do well 
instead of trying to put me to put me down um yeah that's a deal breaker definitely for me an unhealthy relationship is like all those things that, mm -hmm. that you both talked about and also it's going back to the thing of needs it's where needs aren't met so your need for respect um your need for affection mm -hmm. the need for to be listened to um the need to be cared for the need to thrive the need to have meaningful projects the need for your friends like mm -hmm. i think that's really important in an unhealthy relationship i think one of the first signs is um like your partner putting you off your friends or trying to isolate, isolate you from your you, friends yes. that's like one of your needs major need we all need friends mm -hmm. um and i think that has to be that's like our number one red flag for it unhealthy is, relationships don't be isolating me from my amazing girlfriends yeah, yeah. um yeah and just the and, and i feel like a really unhealthy relationship is one that takes away from you and one that's a really healthy relationship add something yeah yeah enriches you yeah yeah because i yeah. think going back to what you say about um isolation once they do that then they know they can control you yeah. mm -hmm. because you've got nobody around you but them yeah. to give you a reality yeah. check exactly be like <laughs> yeah, yeah and they create this unnecessary division oh they're not good for you yeah. they're going to try and turn you against me yeah. and all these negative things just to separate you from your family and your friends so that all you have is him and then if should anything go wrong you have no support no. network yeah, right. because he's managed to yeah. cut isolate you, yeah. isolate you yeah. from from everybody so yeah, yeah definitely that's a definite red flag there right and our final question and probably the um, most difficult of the three questions that we're talking about is, does a woman bear any culpability in staying too long in an unhealthy relationship? Take it away, Felicity. I, this question is kind of interesting to me because it sort of, First of all, why is the onus on like it being a woman? Because mm -hmm. any uh, unhealthy relationship could be something that a man needs to leave also. Um, so there's that. And then the other thing is, I kind of feel like when a relationship is unhealthy and it's hurting the people that are in it, mm -hmm. for me, the question is not whose fault it is or where the blame lies, but what support do those people need to leave that situation? So I just almost have like a, I would answer your question with the, with that question, like what support do you need to leave? Because there's lots of reasons why people end up staying in unhealthy mm -hmm. relationships. And we were talking about isolation. I think one of the reasons people end up staying in unhealthy relationships is because they don't have any network. Uh -huh. And with women as well, like the so often the way that things work out because of uh, how expensive it is to get childcare, um, and the fact that women generally still earn a lot less money than men. There's often economic reasons why it can be really difficult to leave. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about culpability or blame. Is that helpful when I feel like the real question is like, how do you get the support so that the so everyone can leave the unhealthy situation? Mm -hmm. So that question to you would sound like victim blaming? A little bit? A little bit, yeah, a little bit. Right. Okay. What um What are your opinions? Well, I think um, <coughs> if I understand that question, mm -hmm. it's um. Do you want me to rephrase like, it? Yeah, to right. Rephrase. So, say you were in a relationship, yeah. and you could possibly tell that it was unhealthy, and you didn't need to be there, okay. but you stayed for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, fear, isolation, yeah. whatever reason, yeah. do you um, take blame for that? Um, people, st I think people stay in relationships that are bad for different reasons. Mm -hmm. For example, um, fear of what people would say. I mean, right. you have friends, families, right. um, neighbours, and then 
people look at your relationship outside and say, oh, this couple are perfect. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you're separated. And yeah. Um, people start wondering what's happened. Like, yeah. like the fear of, I mean, you've been pretending for so long, oh, my relationship is perfect. Oh, my husband is this, my boyfriend is this. And then all, all of a sudden, you're telling them, oh, we broke up. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, that, that stigma. Right, right. Especially yeah. in our community, especially yeah. in the African community. In the, in African stigma community. Stigma is a big yeah. thing. The stigma, especially when you're married, the stigma, like, oh, what would people say? I'm divorced. Or maybe you have a child with a person and say, oh, she's a single mom. That stigma of being called a single mom. Yeah. Because society judge you like, oh, what, what could she have done that her yeah. husband left her? Yeah. And it's so always the women. people tend to judge you. Yeah. And then because of that stigma, people tend to stay in very bad relationship for so long because of the fear of what people will say. Mm -hmm. And then another thing is financial dependence. So most women, especially if you have children, you depend on your other partner to, for expenses like certain household expenses, taking, looking after the kids. So, if you're on your own, for example, you have two, three kids, how would you fend for these children financially? You're not walking, you have toddlers on the tree. Yeah. You can't walk, you can't do anything. How would you fend? For example, if I take myself as an example, I don't have family here to help me with childcare. Mm -hmm. So how would you, you the, the thinking alone, I mean, when I think about it, if I leave this man, well, how am I going to fend for these kids? Mm -hmm. So. It's like financial. You you you're dependent on this person. He helps with the rent, the feeding, everything. Mm -hmm. You don't have family around to help you if something goes wrong. Like you need childcare. This child is sick, or my child needs to go have a surgery today. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna look, stay home, look after us in the hospital? Like some mm -hmm. you. There are so many things to think about. Yeah. That so you feel you like just, you're stuck. You you just feel like you're stuck. Yeah. For example. Maybe if you have family around, it might be a bit easier. Yeah. You might think, oh, my mom is there, my sister is there, my mm -hmm. friend is there. But when you have no support system around, you, you, mm -hmm. you just get stuck. It boils down to what you, you originally said. It's the network. When you don't have the network there, it's really difficult to live somewhere you're comfortable. Like Even though it's bad, it's bad, for example, but then you get into the routine of, oh, this is my life. Yeah. You just accept that situation. This is my life. So it's... Yeah. It's really difficult. Yeah. And most women are in this situation and that's why people stay in bad relationship for mm -hmm. a long time. Mm -hmm. um, maybe in the part of the men, I think the men just have to take that drastic decision to leave and that's yeah. when they're forced to say, oh, they don't, they don't just do it consciously. The men have to say, oh, I'm leaving, maybe move away or something. That's when it dawns on them, oh yeah, this is really ended. Because yeah. then they have to really face that reality mm -hmm. that, oh, yes, I have to do this. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I, I wonder that something? just in your question about culpability, mm -hmm. I, I almost feel like there's, a, there's something about will and self-love, maybe more than blame. That's about, like, I'm in charge of my destiny. I don't mm -hmm. want to be a victim of my life. I want to win at things. And if we there's like a, a grey area between like um, you get stuck in a relationship you don't have the network and you can't leave and it's like pure victimhood and then there's like a um, a kind of I'm going to leave I'm going to change my whole life I'm going to fix everything I'm going to be like a superwoman and I feel like both of those things are not quite realistic I feel like there's somewhere in the middle where we are responsible for ourselves and we can still be victims of a yeah. horrible situation. Yeah, I think that's what I was trying to get at, the responsibility for self. Because for me, I stayed in a relationship that I knew full well that I should not have been there. And I'll tell you why. It's because society judges you. Yeah. So I thought, oh my God, you know, I have children. Mm. A failed relationship yeah your family your friends are going to look at you and think why did it not work yet again like, like yeah outside. what is wrong yeah. with you 
you know, because everybody sees you mm. outside and they think, oh my God, you know, they're so cute together. They've got these beautiful children. Mm. What could have gone wrong? Yeah. So you think, I'm not going to let society judge me. I'm not going to be um, a statistic. I'm going to make this work. I'm going to stay, you know, by any means necessary. I will not allow society to judge me. But then when you eventually leave, you look back and for me, I looked back and said, what was I doing? You know, I knew that I shouldn't have been there. Why did it take so long? Why all the pretense? Why did, did I just, you know, stand up and, you know, and just say, well, it didn't work. And despite everything that I did yeah. to make it work, it did not work. Why did I stay so long, waste so much time when I could have been doing, you know, better things, positive things with my life, but I stayed for the sake of what, society what not saying? judging me, yeah. friends and family not judging me. That's why I asked the question, do I, you know, bear any culpability in that? Especially if um, nobody made me stay. Um, my support network had not been cut off. So why did I stay? Should I be blameless for staying so long when I could have just left? I have family, I have friends. Why did I stay just to please society? You but, know? but then even if the answer is that you are to blame, how does that, how does that help you to be like, I am to blame for this? And that's why I go back to my question of mm -hmm. actually what, would what did you what would you have needed to leave like and what could you what would have made it easier for you to leave and then maybe we can find some answers of how we mm -hmm. can empower each other more to like not stay in unhealthy relationships mm -hmm. I, I do get what you're saying i totally get what you're saying but it still did not excuse why i stayed i suppose everybody's situation is different Whereas, where a woman has been totally cut off from her support network, then it would be difficult for her to know what to do and where to go. But if your support network has yeah, not been yeah, cut off right. and you've simply stayed yeah. because of a stigma, then do you, should you bear some responsibility for that? Should you be totally blameless when you could have? Oh, I think, I think. Gone to your support network. You could have gone to family, you could have gone to friends. Should you be totally blameless? Or is there a contributory I think, blame? I think there's a contributor, for example, fear of being alone. You don't, you, you're, you're, there's this fear, oh, I don't know if I'm going to find someone else. Yeah. Fear of being alone, and then mm -hmm. maybe age is not on your side. It's like, oh, will I find somebody else? How old am I? Mm -hmm. will, why don't I just manage to stick to this guy? Let's... Although life begins yeah. at 50 now. <laughs> yeah. 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 I have been reliably informed that life begins yeah, at 50. Like, for example, for me, I, th I thought about that. Like, who's going to want me with, with, with a child? Who's, which man is going to come into my life after I've had a child? It's always... As beautiful as you yeah. are. <laughs> So there's this fear that, oh, yeah. I might not be able to find someone else to tolerate me, tolerate my child, that my child is going to see as a father figure. Mm -hmm. So it's, that fear is also there. You don't want to be alone. You don't want to yeah. raise that child alone. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, it looks like we have had um, differing views on the topic and now we would like to go to the millennial in the room do you have the same experience as we do um i think for my generation in particular um we now have social media and so it's a lot easier to keep up with other people's lives you can see what's going on everyone is posting i suppose the highlights of their relationship yeah. no mm -hmm. one posts about the bad things and so if you see people traveling with their partners and 
going out to dinner and they're buying each other presents, mm -hmm. you feel like you want that too. Um, and so you might stay with someone that maybe you shouldn't be with, that you know you shouldn't be with, just so you can post about those things too. Um, so I suppose, yeah, in short, I think we do have the same or at least similar experiences with healthy and unhealthy relationships. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah just to please... Just to please society. It is again. all about just to other keep people. up appearances. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think exactly. just as one like last thought that is coming to me, like I feel like I didn't have social media when I was growing up, but all the movies and all of the um kind of adverts and their sort of T V series and stuff definitely gave me, I think unrealistic expectations about what a good relationship mm -hmm. would be and really impractical focuses as well mm -hmm. on stuff like oh he should be like really handsome and <laughs> I should be really thin and yeah. we'll be like skipping along in the sunshine <laughs> and really like what I found I'm really happy in the relationship I'm in now and what yeah. I like is that we can do really boring everyday stuff and make yeah. it fun go yeah. to the supermarket together yeah. um okay. Yeah, just really everyday things, and I can do a fart. And, really like <laughs> <laughs> and I, so I think that thing about like our expectations about relationships, and whether it's social media or fairy tales or yeah. like I don't know Disney movies. Yeah. Oh, I tell you, you for know. me, it was endless love. Do you know that old film? I haven't seen it. I oh saw my it. goodness. So that's what I based my, you know, whole expectations <laughs> on. Watching that film, think, oh my God, this is what it should be like. I think um, who was in the film? Brooke Shields was in that film, Endless Love. So I thought, yes, I'm totally going to meet somebody like that guy that got with Brooke Shields in in Endless Love, but it's going to be like happy ever after. I waited and waited and no. They never that didn't happen. <laughs> that didn't happen. And then later on, it was um, Richard Gere in um, what's that? Pretty Woman. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, I'm gonna find my Richard Gere, and <laughs> <laughs> it'll be plain sailing. He would just sweep me off my feet, and you know. <laughs> he is quite but, yeah. controlling in that film, though. I, is he? Yeah, I watched it again recently, and I was like. I don't know about this actually. I actually don't remember him being controlling. He's paying for everything. He like he is buying her time, and well, he's like, "I want you to wear this. I want you to do this. I want you." And it's like, I don't know actually. Yeah, but that was just a <laughs> business contract. But after that, he did end up falling in love with her. Yeah. And he, I remember that he was afraid of heights. And he ended up, you know, climbing this ladder to take her flowers. And oh. she was at the top of this building or something. Ooh. So, it took so a he, risk. he took a risk for her. So let's forget about the contractual agreement. <laughs> <laughs> he may have been controlling there because it was a business deal. Yeah. But after that business ended and she left, he kind of realized that, Hang on, I actually love this woman. And he climbed the ladder to just to give her flowers. Come on, that is love. Wow. <coughs> well, love in initial stages. Oh. Like you. <laughs> We're not talking about me, yeah? Yeah, I think we should cut before he tells us he's cute. I think we have had an amazing discussion and now I would like to hear your views on love. Leave them in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and press that like button. See you next time on the Couch with Dino.